All right, you guys, welcome back to our day of notes on earthquakes and volcanoes. Today is day three of four. Okay, your objectives for today is you will review the definition of an earthquake. Hopefully you learned this already. You'll know the difference between the focus and the epicenter. <clears throat> and you will understand the different ways we measure earthquakes. Okay, then we're going to take a look at tsunamis really quick. Okay, so pause this if you need more time to write down the unit of topic. I'm going to move on. Okay, for your quick write, five points. How many earthquakes do you think we get a day in California? <clears throat> a few, little ones, thousands, none. What do you think? What do you think would happen if a major earthquake struck Roseville? Are our buildings ready for it? Okay, and what do you know about earthquakes? Anything you can think of about earthquakes, okay? Write a good sentence or two, please, for five points. Go ahead and pause this while you finish this. I'm going to move on. <clears throat> Okay, here's an actual map from the USGS here on the amount of earthquakes. This was just the other day, okay? So we get hundreds of earthquakes literally every week, okay? Most of them are small, though. We don't feel them. They're micro quakes, basically. They're called micro quakes, and you don't really feel them. They're magnitudes 1, 2s, and sometimes 3s and 4s, okay? But... Four, you can start to feel. Magnitude threes, you don't really feel. So that's an earthquake map of the of California here in the last week. So you can see that most of them happen along the San Andreas Transform plate boundary or fault. Okay. So here we go. Breaking rock at plate boundaries. Okay. Stress on rock is greatest. Okay. And when rock breaks, it forms a fault. Okay. So rocks break and move along flat surfaces called faults. So that is a fault. So for your notes, what is a fault? Question on the left-hand side. Answer goes on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. <clears throat> okay. Breaking rock. When faults break, they release energy in the form of seismic waves. Okay, Those seismic waves are what causes the ground to shake during an earthquake. So when the ground is shaking, it's because those waves are moving underneath your feet. They're literally like waves moving through rock, like waves moving through water in a way. So an earthquake, if we define it, is the movement of the ground caused by waves of energy released as rocks move along faults. <clears throat> so an earthquake... okay is the movement of the ground okay caused by waves of energy released as rocks okay move along faults so those are seismic waves they're released from an earthquake okay and those waves move outward in all directions like a pebble being thrown in a pond okay and those waves move outward in all directions all right so <clears throat> Well, remember, stress on rock is greatest at plate boundaries. And if we look at where earthquakes happen, they happen at earthquake, around plate boundaries, where you have faults. Faults occur, rock is broken along faults at plate boundaries, okay? Where stress on rock is greatest, okay? That's how we discovered plates. So we started plotting earthquakes, and we realized that earthquakes happen in localized regions, in other words, they don't occur randomly. They happen at these plate boundaries. Okay? So, for your notes, what is an earthquake? Okay? Question goes on the left-hand side. Answer goes on the right-hand side of your notes. Okay? So, once again, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. <clears throat> All right, the focus. The focus, sometimes also referred to as the hypocenter okay, of an earthquake, is the point or location inside the Earth's or interior where energy is released. Okay, So it is the location where earthquakes originate, underground, producing seismic waves. So it, it is the, it's like if you throw a pebble into the water, it's the spot right where that rock hits the water. Okay. Well, that's the focus. It's underground. It could be deep. It could be shallow. Okay. It could be right underneath your feet or it could be miles below your feet. Okay. So that is the focus. So as we just learned, the focus of an earthquake lies below the surface, right? 
Okay. Well, if you were standing at the epicenter, okay, you would be standing at the point on the Earth's surface directly above the focus, which we call the epicenter. So if you're standing at the epicenter, somewhere beneath your feet is the earthquake's focus. Okay. Could be shallow. Like I said, it could be really deep. But if you are standing at the epicenter, somewhere below your feet, okay, is the focus. Okay, so the epicenter is the point on the Earth's surface directly above an earthquake's focus. All right, so for your notes, what is the difference between the focus and the epicenter? Okay, that is the question that goes on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you write all of this. You write all of it. Okay, and use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. And then draw this, please. Draw this little diagram here the best you can. All right, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. <clears throat> okay, earthquake magnitude. Okay, to measure the amount of energy released from an earthquake, scientists use the Richter scale invented by Charles Richter, okay, a seismologist. Okay, the Richter scale measures the magnitude or amount of energy released from an earthquake. Okay, notice on the left hand side over here we have number of earthquakes per year. And over here we have magnitude. So, thousands of earthquakes happen every day, but only the destructive earthquakes receive attention, right? It's the destructive ones that we read about in the newspapers. The graph to the right displays earthquake magnitude and the number of earthquakes worldwide. So we have magnitude 1 to 1.9, over 600,000 per year, okay? And these are roughly, or excuse me, more than 6,000, 600,000 each year. These are insignificant. You don't really notice them, okay? <clears throat> and then we have minor quakes, okay? So insignificant are basically microquakes. And we have minor quakes, which are magnitude 2 to 3.9. They can be felt if you're standing right at the epicenter, okay? or near the epicenter. And we have more than 400,000 of these quakes per year. And then we have magnitude four to 4.9, can be strongly felt, about the same energy as a strong tornado, about 14,000 of these per year. And you can, be, you can definitely feel a magnitude four if you're standing, especially right near the epicenter, okay? Five to 5.9 can be damaging in poor countries with Four buildings, okay? About 1,500 of these per year on average, okay? These are moderate earthquakes. Strong earthquakes, magnitude 6 to 6.9 can be damaging in even wealthy countries if they hit in the, mid in the middle of a city. The same energy as a nuclear explosion, about 110 per year, okay? And then 7 to 7.9 can cause serious damage and loss of life. The same energy as Mount St. Helens eruption, about 12 per year, okay? You're like, wow, 12 of these a year, but remember, they only, re sometimes these earthquakes occur in the middle of nowhere where no one gets hurt, okay? And so they don't receive any attention. And then you have magnitudes eight to 9.5 can cause Serious damage, okay? These are great earthquakes, maybe one per year on average, okay? The largest known earthquake, Chile, magnitude 9.5, okay? Let's look at the energy though, okay? How many more times powerful is an earthquake with a magnitude eight than an earthquake with a magnitude five? So here's what you have to understand. Between an eight, okay, and a magnitude seven here, okay? An eight is 31 times more powerful than a magnitude seven, okay? So, let's go back to the question. How many more times powerful is a magnitude eight than a magnitude five? Well, okay, so we have 31 times more powerful, another 31 times more powerful, and then another 31 times more powerful. So it's a multiplication problem. It's 31 times 31 times 31 roughly. So 29,790 times more powerful, okay? Notice it's exponential. These earthquakes get really powerful very quickly, okay? So 29,000 times more powerful. So a magnitude eight is roughly 30,000 times more powerful than a magnitude five, okay? So 
What is the Richter scale? Okay. Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Please use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay. So the Mercalli scale. The Mercalli scale has been modified, but its original inventor was in 1902, and it uses the observations of people who experienced the earthquake to estimate its intensity, damage, in the epicenter. Okay? So, the great 1906 earthquake of San Francisco took place long before the Richter scale was invented in seismographs, so we couldn't measure it. So, how do we know the strength of the earthquake? By the Mercalli scale, by talking to people. Okay? So here's a seismic shake map of the 1906 earthquake. The red areas represent the shaking, the, real, the areas that shook during the earthquake the most. And the bluer areas represent areas where the earthquake was really barely felt. The bluish kind of turquoise area. Okay, so here we go. One, up here, people didn't really feel it. Okay, two, a few people might notice it in these areas. Okay especially if they're in like a taller building. Okay, not too many tall buildings back in 1906 though. Remember this is the great 1906 earthquake uh, from San Francisco, all right? Three, here's a three region, right? Here's a three, two to three. Many people indoors feel movement. Hanging objects might swing back and forth. People outdoors might not realize that an earthquake is occurring. Four, most people indoors feel movement. Hanging objects swing, dishes, windows, and doors rattle. The earthquake feels like a heavy truck hitting the walls. We had an earthquake here the other day, like about four months ago or so, five months ago, and my students basically said it felt like something hit the wall. Okay? So if you felt that earthquake that happened near Roseville or near Sacramento the other day, you basically were experiencing a four. Okay? Five, almost everyone feels movement, sleeping people are awakened, doors swing open and close, dishes are broken, pictures on the wall move, small objects move or are turned over, trees might shake, liquids might spill out of open containers. Okay, so this these people right here in this region of California experienced a five. So they might have woke up in the middle of the night, okay? Or their dishes might have been broken here in this five, this greenish region, okay? A six, everyone feels movement, people have trouble walking, objects fall from shelves, pictures fall off walls, furniture moves. Okay, I've actually experienced an earthquake up in college where my couch, I was laying on a couch and the couch shook back and forth. So furniture moved, I was experiencing a six. Okay, plaster and walls might crack, trees and bushes shake, damage is slight in poorly built buildings, no structural damage. Seven. People actually have difficulty standing. Drivers feel their cars shaking. Some furniture breaks. Loose brick falls from buildings. Damage is slight to moderate in well-built buildings. Considerable in poorly built buildings. So seven here. This orangish yellow region here, people are experiencing a seven here. Okay. An eight. Remember, these are Roman numerals, right? V-I-I, -I, eight. Drivers have trouble steering. Houses that are not bolted down might shift on their foundations. Tall structures such as towers and chimneys might twist and fall. Okay, well-built buildings suffer slight damage. Poorly built structures suffer severe damage. Tree branches break. Hillsides might crack if the ground is wet. Water level water levels in wells might change. So that's an eight. Look at that. A light orangish. Okay, dark or excuse me, an orangish reddish color right around here. An eight. Okay, so people here. Now we're getting we're talking massive. Okay. We're getting here into these nines and tens, okay? Well-built buildings suffer considerable damage. Houses that are not bolted down move off their foundations. Some underground pipes are broken. Some ground cracks. Reservoirs suffer serious damage. Most buildings in their foundations are destroyed. A 10 right here, okay, in this reddish areas, okay? So an 11, okay? Look at, here's where the epicenter was, okay? Here's where the epicenter was. So... You look here, okay, most buildings collapse, bridges are destroyed, large cracks appear in the ground, underground pipelines are destroyed, railroad tracks are badly bent. So, and the last thing is in 12, almost everything is basically leveled and destroyed, okay? Objects are thrown in the air, 
the ground actually moves in waves. As the seismic waves pass through the ground, they make the ground move like an ocean wave, okay, or ripples. And large amounts of rock will move. So that's a 12. Okay, that's about as serious as you can get. Okay, and that's right at the epicenter. All right, so what is the Mercalli intensity scale? Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Once again, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about today is a tsunami. Okay, well, we had a tsunami happen not too long ago in Japan that killed about 20,000 people. Off the coast of Japan was a fault. Okay, the rock broke and it displaced water and generating a huge wave. So this bulge or wave was pushed upward. And these waves, you don't notice them at sea, but as they approach the shore, they become dangerous and they stand up really tall. And it's a flood or surge of water that approaches shore that can travel for miles and destroy everything in its past. These are tsunamis. So when a fault is near the ocean surface, the fault has to be near the surface. It can displace water, generating a huge wave. These waves only become dangerous, though, as they approach shore. So if you're out in the middle of the sea, you probably won't even notice a tsunami. But as they approach shore, that's when they become deadly. And they get taller, and they flood, and they surge, and they, they approach the shoreline with great speeds and velocity, basically taking out everything in its path. Okay? That's if they are a big tsunami. There are small tsunamis that don't do much damage. Okay, So for your notes, the last one for today is a... Okay, what is a tsunami? Nothing to fill in for the answering bank in, in the answer bank. Do the question on the left hand side. Answer goes on the right hand side. Okay. Go ahead and pause this while you write, please. Okay. Last one for today. And summarize for today. Okay. Thanks for listening. As always. Okay. Have a great evening. You are done with your homework, and we'll see you next time. Go ahead and pause this, please, while you complete your summary.